can't get this car to start. It's just backfiring now. So I'm gonna have to push it into the garage. I do have um, chargers, but when the battery is too low, it doesn't charge. So I had this thing hooked up for weeks thought I was charging and the whole time it wasn't charging so we are back to zero so the car is in the air Time to change the clutch because last time I drove it, the clutch burnt out. Rip into that a drift event as usual, and um, I think too many third gear kicks because this car does not have a lot of power, and it just eventually just kind of burned out. I don't think it's a clutch, I think it's a throwout bearing, it kind of has a whistle to it. So that makes me think it's really a throw bearing, but either way, transmission has to come out. So we're going to do it. So um, let's uh, peep under here because it's uh, pretty messy under here. This thing leaks every fluid possible. This thing is an absolute mess under here. <laughs> and it looks like um, one of it is right here. Let me get the light so you guys can see. One of the leaks is right here. It looks like somebody tapped this oil pan. Um, it wasn't me. Looks like somebody tapped this oil pan previously um, for boost for a turbo drain and then changed their mind and put this in there. So it's not sealed very well. And I think it leaks from here also. And then I could see, I don't know if you guys can see from there, but I could see all the way up here the valve cover is leaking pretty bad on the back. So I think a lot of this coming from the valve cover down this way and just collaboration effort of just making an absolute mess. So this thing leaks a lot of oil, power steering fluid, any kind of fluid on this car, it leaks. <laughs> we'll get to it eventually. Um, I have a lot of free time here soon. All right, so I've already done this job uh, a couple weeks ago, so it's kind of fresh in my mind still. So I already have all my tools over here, got my toolbox sitting ready for me to go. My goal to remove and replace this transmission is two hours. May not happen, maybe three, but I'm gonna try for two hours. So um, where's my phone? I'm gonna set a timer. Right now the time is 12.01, and by 2.01, this car should be done. So starting timer, I'm not gonna cheat. Timer's going. I'm not gonna cheat, there's no benefit in me cheating. If I make it, I make it. If not, I then not. I'm gonna leave it up here. I don't wanna know what the time is. When I finish, I'll come out there and do it. So. Um, yeah, let's just get started. I think the biggest issue I could potentially have is getting the exhaust off. Um, but I had the exhaust off last time I changed the clutch on this car, which is like two years ago. So it, the bolts shouldn't be rusted on there by now. Um, and I don't have a bitch clip on this transmission because I have a chassis amount of shifter. So that will save me a lot of time. That took me like 30 minutes last time. So that's why I think I could do it in two hours. So let's go ahead and drop the exhaust. And um, I don't know, I'm wasting time, I'm talking. Close to the camera. All right, the final boss is done. Funny, I say that's the final boss and that was actually the very first thing we have to do. So, um, but again, the rest of it will be fine. I knew that would be the hardest part. So I'm gonna put it in time-lapse mode, put some music on and I'm gonna get in my zone. We're at 23 minutes already. 
<laughs> 23 minutes just to pull that off. Two hours ain't looking good right now. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Keep it a buck with y'all, man. I didn't know the top of my head was that bald, yo. That's looking bad, bro. I ain't cut my hair in a minute, bro. We've been busy moving. I ain't really cared. I got the bushy beard going. I just, I haven't trimmed nothing. I haven't cared. It's just been, I've been working. You know what I'm saying? As you see, we're at the other house now. Um, if you see my old basement, it doesn't look like this. So uh, we'll discuss that more in, later in this video. But uh, damn, bro. I need some Rogaine in this mob. Yo, Keeps. Y'all be sponsoring videos, right? I've seen some Keeps ads. Hit me up, man. Because <laughs> I need some. Damn. Back to the video. <laughs> All right. We are an hour and three minutes in. From 105. Started this job at like 12.02. Um, so I got to pull. All the bolts are out for the transmission. Now it's time to actually pull it out. And I'm expecting some stuff to hit the ground when I pull it out. Because... Stuff is supposed to be broken in there. So what do we have? In the door number one. Let me get the light. Oh, oh the wires. Okay, get off my wrist. This happens every time. Oh yeah, I called it. Throw out bearing. Hey, where's the bolt in here? I don't know. Oh yeah. I don't know where this bolt is from. What is this bolt from? Why is there a bolt in here? What is that? What is it? Oh, there's a lot of bolts in here. Ooh, that's bad. I'm not gonna finish this job today. Um, so, wondering where the bolts came from. From my input shaft. Stop moving. Okay, let's get this out of here. Yeah, that's supposed to be mounted to that, and I guess when this was doing whatever it wanted to do, it kind of pulled the thread. Well, I don't think it stripped it. Input shaft is clean. I don't know what you guys are looking at. Hold on. You guys see what I'm seeing now? Yeah, input shaft is clean. I don't think it stripped the bolts. Yeah, it still works. All right. Well, that's interesting. Ah. Yeah, this thing is stuck. Well, this is what I'm working with here. And this thing is not supposed to be connected. It's supposed to slide in and out. Let me push on the thing, but... Oh, there we go. Okay, we got it. <laughs> so, if we clean that up and put that back... Should be fine. It's not bit. As far as clutch, I might as well change the clutch. I'm here. Um, and I did buy one already, but I just bought a clutch. I didn't buy a flywheel. But it's, it, it, is, it is pretty much the same thing I already have. It's the Clutch Max. They're the eBay clutches, which they do work well. And um, my turbo car has an eBay clutch. And it's been three years, and that thing has never slipped. So... This is, this works fine. And this one actually is rated for a little bit more horsepower. I actually got a higher rated clutch. Um, that one's rated for like 400 foot pounds of torque. I don't have 400 foot pounds of torque in this car yet. If I do, then I already have a clutch for it. So I might as well change it. And if it's rated for higher 
horsepower, it should be able to handle more abuse. Though I don't think my clutch was ever the problem. I think it was just the throttle bearing exploded from clutch kicking. Um, the thing that sucks is a lot of my stuff is at the new house already. Um, my main box is here, of course, but the rest of my tools and cleaning products and all that stuff is uh, not here. So I'm struggling with what I need. Uh, I was looking for some sandpaper, but I don't have any sandpaper here to clean this up. So I'm um, kind of taking an L. And if you're that's news to you that I'm moving. Yeah, it's the last video we are moving. Um, I don't know why that video blew up like it did. So if you're new here, hey, how you doing? This is what I do on regular, so um, don't really do. We will do a house tour um, when we get the house up because we're supposed to do a house tour here and I never got around to doing it and now it's too late. So um, I will do a house tour at the other house when we actually get everything set up. But um, yeah, this is what I normally do on this channel. Um, mess with shit box cars. <laughs> so this is the shittiest one. Um, this is Roxanne. This is my drift car and it's ugly it gets beat up it gets abused regularly so as long as it's in one piece i don't care what it looks like so um these are the nicer cars and um yeah this is uh these are the ones i actually care about so and there's actually more but they're not here so anyways all right so this is gonna be an incomplete job i'm gonna have to stop the clock because this is not gonna work this is the cover for the input shaft. Here's the new throw out bearing. The throw out bearing goes over top of this. Clutch fork is right here. Clutch fork pushes this forward when you push in the clutch, and that slides against the pressure plate, which is, you know, everything works, right? But because this thing is damaged, it doesn't slide on and off very smoothly. It's gritty, it gets stuck, and I feel like that's just gonna cause the same problem I had before. So it's probably going to ruin this thing. Um, it's probably going to make this thing spin again, which will spin the bolts out again. And I think that's what happened the first time. I think after this one, the the bad one exploded or broke. I think that's when it, you know, just kind of didn't want to spin anymore. And it did that. So um, I was trying to sand it down. This is only sand sanding thing I have here, some random sanding block. I don't even know what grit it is. It's not very strong and it's not doing anything to this. So this has a gash in it, as you can probably see. It's not the best condition. So I would have to sand this very smoothly. So I'm gonna have to run to the store, get some sandpaper, some good sandpaper and sand that down. I would like to buy another one, but finding one of these is not gonna be easy. I'm not gonna get it anytime soon. and. I need to finish this car to drive it to the new house. So I need to finish it this week. So anyways, let me go to the store. So we are stopping the clock at one minute and 30 seconds, which included my explanation just now. So still, it was about an hour to get the clutch out. I was on making time. Um, again, the exhaust took me 22 minutes. So if that would have took me five, which I expected then I'd have, I would definitely would have been on course to have it done in two hours. It's fine. Not mad. Here's what it is. Um, again, I was just trying to challenge myself. But I have to go to the stove. All right. I'm home. At the other home. I was going to the store to grab new sandpaper. And then on my way to the store, I'm like, well, I got to drive halfway to the house anyways. So I might just go all the way to the house and save my money and not have to spend any money. And just go grab my stuff. So here's my box of sandpaper. So I can just take this whole thing with me and not spend a dime. So as you can see, most of the garage has moved here. And um, it is definitely smaller. Um, that will be the space for my box. I put my tires against the wall and then hang stuff on the walls. That's pretty much it. But um, yeah, so let's go home. Okay, so I can already tell this is going to be a very annoying neighborhood. Um, I saw this on the front porch, and it's a violation for grass and weeds and junk vehicle. First of all, we hadn't even moved in yet. So yes, of course, the grass hasn't been cut because we don't live here. Um, and that's not a junk vehicle. That is a daily, a fully functional daily. Um, I was dailying it. We put it here because we didn't want anybody to think nobody lived here and to think it's still an open house and walk through it and stuff. So that's why we put the car here. It is fully functional. 
Nothing wrong with it. I don't know why they labeled it a junk vehicle. Must repair and tag car and driveway. It's tagged. Like, what are you talking about? That's how we starting off? That's how we starting off? That's a junk vehicle? I know E90s ain't the nicest cars, but labeled it junk? Wait till they see the actual junk. <laughs> this is going to be annoying. Alright, and about after 10 minutes of doing all that, uh, this thing actually looks really smooth. So, now, this thing is smooth. It's not getting stuck at all, even when I add friction to it. And it's... No doubt in my mind this will still work, so I'm going to use it. And of course I'm going to put grease on it anyways, and that will definitely help it not get stuck. But um, yeah, this looks like it's still usable. So, And the bolts still look good. And I was wondering if the threads stripped out in the transmission, but they look like they're still good. So the bolts still, strip, um, bolts still thread also. So we are good. We are safe. So we can actually put this thing back in. And continue our process. I need you. You got you gotta come with me. That's it. Feels good. All right, removing the pressure plate and clutch, not the flywheel. Yeah, clutch is perfect. Flywheel's good. Look at that. There's nothing wrong with this clutch. Man. I'm gonna save this. I'm definitely saving this. It never tells you on these eBay kits what side is what. But I know the indention side always goes towards the flywheel. Because if you have it that way, think about, well, oh, look at that. It says flywheel side. If you're ever confused, think about it like this. The pressure plate, when you push the clutch in, it pushes in. You don't want anything to be there when you push it in. So if I push the pressure plate in, it's going to hit all this and it's going to be a problem. So remember, you want this as flat as possible. So put that, any part that sticks out, in this hole. Because this is never going to move. So, it goes that way. These don't get a lot of torque. I have a torque wrench. Either way, they don't get a lot of torque. Once it starts spinning, that's pretty much as much torque you need. All right, ready for the home part? All right, so since the two hour window went out of the door a long time ago, um, I didn't even restart the timer. Um, it's still set. I just haven't hit play, I forgot. And um, But we can add five to 10 minutes on um, clutch and pressure plate. But this thing is about to die, so I'm actually going to plug it up to the charger, let it charge for about 20 minutes, and eat something, take a little break, and then we'll be back. So I try to do it in one take, but yeah, things don't always work out as planned. Wasn't that bad. It was fixable, so we're good. So I'm going to let this charge. I'll be back. And then we'll do it under 2.30 now. 2.30 is going to be the goal. I got I, I gotta put you on the charger. Like I'm always, I'm always like walking away from the camera, but um, 
yeah, I, that, that realistically, this is what happens behind the scenes. I walk away and I'll cut it and then but, and I'll come right back to the camera. So it just, it looks stupid. So I'm, I'm gonna turn you off now. Here's, here's the button. I stop recording. All right, it is time to get back to work. We're hitting play. Back at a minute and 30 seconds. So let's put this all back together now. And bitch press. All right, and we are done. So I just turned the camera off. I just wanted to get it done. We are at 3.15. When everything's back together. 3.15, um, definitely took longer than it should have. Um, but around three hours worth of work. So um, what time is it? Where's my watch? Because we did stop. It's 6.52. I had to take my watch off because I couldn't re uh, reach transmission bolts. But um, yeah, of course, there was a break, a couple breaks in between charging camera, running to the other house and stuff like that. But everything is put back together. So this is on everything. So um, I had the battery charging over here. Hopefully it's charged enough to start the car. Probably not because this battery is dead, dead. But I'm going to try to put it in and hopefully it will start. <laughs> Our battery's in. Hazard's going crazy right now. I don't think it's going to start. This battery's so dead. But we will try. Oh, look at that. No. Didn't do anything. Alright, we plugged up. Let's get a start. And run through some gears. That is loud. It's still backfired. That starter is mad loud. I don't like that. I think the starter is like grazing the flywheel. So I have to go back in there and readjust the starter. <laughs> Fun, fun, fun. All right, I didn't want to do this, but I had to go the long way. So I had to remove the intake manifold. Now I have access to the starter and um, I can line it up from here. But yeah, that's where it needs to be. And I have to tighten it right there. Um, I can actually reach under with the extensions and actually get up there and touch the starter bolts, but um, for some reason it just was not going on the dowel. So every time I try to tighten it, it would go a little bit off and that's why it was grinding because it's not sitting straight. So from here, I can see the bolt. I can see where it's supposed to be. One day, just one day, I want to work on a car and everything goes right. Today is not that day because everything is going terribly wrong. So, um, look. So, I was trying to get the dowel pin on there, correct? And as you can see, it is lined up on the dowel pin. I was trying to tighten that thing, that bolt, and it's very, very, very tight. I think it's cross-threaded. I think the dial wasn't lined up when I tightened it, and I think it cross-threaded. So now that it's lined up, now it's cross-threaded. It's very, very tight. I feel like it's about to snap any moment. Um, it gets worse. Uh, the other bolt is now <laughs> very, very loose. You know why it's very, very loose? Because the starter is broken. Um, if I go way down here, matter of fact, give me the flashlight. You can see the bottom of the starter broke off. So that bolt is just chilling and obviously not getting tight because what is it tightening to? There's nothing to tighten it to. To make things worse, 
Yes, it gets worse. That piece broke off and I don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> that piece broke off and I don't know where it is. And you think, you wanna guess where you, where I think it is? Probably in the transmission. It fell off right there and that is a hole into the transmission. I don't see it anywhere in the engine bay. I don't see it on the floor. I don't know where it is. It's probably in the transmission, which means I would have to pull the transmission again. I do have a stethoscope thing, a little camera, um, but you know where it is? You guessed it, it's at the other house. So there's nothing I can do tonight. <laughs> this is so frustrating. This is supposed to be a two hour job, turned to three and a half, and now it's gonna be two days. All four, this it's always the smallest things in this garage to just ruin everything oh my god i can't make this stuff up man can't make this stuff up hey it's another day um i was just in the engine trans area with the bore scope trying to find that missing piece of the starter and i did not see it I looked high and low and I did not see it. I could not find it in the belt housing anywhere. So I looked again. I went on the ground, didn't see it. Laid on the ground, looked up and boom, there it was. On top of the oil pan, I found the broken piece. So this is the piece that broke off the starter right here. Don't know how, but it did. And that's the part that's supposed to hold the bolt in place. So it's broken. So, but good news is I don't have to drop the trains again. So as far as trains, we're done. We don't have to talk, do that anymore. So now he's got to replace the starter. Yo, what up vlog? You know what I'm saying? Moving day, he moving. I don't know why you look at it like that. What do you think you are, bro? Something wrong with him, but yeah, we moving. You know what I'm saying? We got, it. all right, wasting the storage. We got that garage, got most of the stuff out of there. Me and Lou's house that she doesn't use. All that paint. Um, did he get all the plants? Oh, God. All, all the mom's plants that she never touched, they've been sitting here for since we got here, actually. Since we moved in last year. Um, yeah, I guess you could say she doesn't like plants. Not really a plant lady, I don't think. But yeah, <clears throat> yeah, we just moving, moving on the stuff. But yeah, we gonna check in later when we almost done. And uh, yeah, and it's been a few days. Uh, brand new starter from Bosch. Just got through the shop. Man, perks. Anyways, three year warranty. And um, yeah, so most of the house is empty at this point. Um, we just got a few more heavy things and trash. That's pretty much it. So we should be done with that. And this trash needs to come out too. So you get this trash out of here. So finish that. All the other cars are at the house. This is the only one that's still here. So let's get it out of here. All right, starter is in place and tight and on the dowel, and there should be zero issues with this car starting now. Well, maybe a fuel issue, because it's still figure that part out. But I think it was just, um, again, tried to crank it, crank it, crank it, crank it, and I think just after a while, it just got flooded. So fuel, pro, uh, fuel rail's unplugged right now, so it's empty. So if there was too much pressure in there, it's gone now, so it should start up. That's what I think. But let's put the, um, the wiring back on. And uh, yeah, so this I didn't plan on doing no starter tutorial today, but kind of just took it off and I'm kind of on a time limit. So I haven't really been focusing too much on tutorial stuff today, but um, easy when you take it off. Just take a picture before you ever take it off. But most of the stuff is pretty, I want to say pretty straightforward because that's a lie. Um, but there's two going to the ground. 
this big red one right here going to the ground and there's a big black one that's actually red under here I don't know if you can see it I got one hand no light but that goes to the ground of course you have to remove this bolt first and then there's two black ones you can remember remember these sizes 13 8 and 10 uh, 13 is for the two hot wires the two reds the big reds there's a 10 that I think it comes from the alternator can't confirm but there's a but they're both ring ring terminals and then there's a smaller one that goes on the eight side so there's 10 that back here's a broken one the one in the middle is 13 the one on this side is an eight and the one on this side is a 10. So just take all those off. Smallest ring terminal on the eight, medium ring terminal on the 10, the two hot ones are on the 13. So it's not that hard. Just again, to be safe, before you take it off, just take a picture just in case you forget. and we are back Roxanne is finally back on the road so I don't know well it's on the stand still but eventually we'll be back on the road <laughs> but I don't know what was going on I guess uh, the fuel pump relay was uh, loose because once I took it out checked to see if it was burnt or anything I didn't see anything wrong put it back and then it started up so there's just no fuel flowing at all so that's kind of weird so I guess I've been doing that the whole time so um, again we had to change this stuff anyways that's not why it wasn't running um, that just happened to happen when I was trying to start it to move it in the garage in the first place. So, um, anyways, that's it. I can finally go back to drifting. I miss drifting. I love drifting. So, um, man, I got to put the side skirt back on. It's in the car. Everything's in the car. All the tools are in the car. The whole drift box, tires, everything is in the car. This thing is actually ready to drift, like, right now. Like, I could literally take this to the event right now. Got tires in the back. The tires on there are good. Like, I... I'm not even going to unload it. It's going to be ready to go. So, um, anyways, maybe maybe Friday night. Huh? We'll see. Um, anyways, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Again, thanks for watching. Um, and, again, if you're new here, this is what we normally do on this channel. It's not normally house stuff. Again, I don't know why that video got so big. I think now it's like 80,000 views. And it's crazy because it wasn't even intended for the public. It was intended. I mean, obviously, it's for the public. But it was intended for my subscribers. I didn't even use tags. Like usually you tag E36, Adam LZ, and try to get, you know, try to jump in their algorithm. I didn't do any of that. I didn't put no tags on that video. I just posted it and figured my loyal followers would see it. And somehow everybody saw it. So, hey, not mad. What's up? How you doing? Anyways, this is what we normally do. Um, this is, again, this is the worst car. This is the shit box. This is the drift car. Slams barriers. Slams other cars. I don't care about this one. It wasn't even red before. It was flat black. It's actually painted now, believe it or not. <laughs> so anyways, um, thanks for watching, guys. Deuces. I will see you in the next one. Also, my drift channel is back up. I'll be drifting. So if you like sim drifting content, that's what I do too. So that channel is also up. I'm just plugging all my stuff because I got new people here. IB Garage. Come on, man. We on. We on. IB Garage. That's my, that's my brand. My merch brand. IBGarage.com. You go in there and get some merch for the channel. Anything you buy supports the channel because whatever profits I take, I get to dump it in the car stuff and make more more content. So that's pretty much the reason for that. So um, 
Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Deuces. I will see you in the next one.